seems I can't believe that you've never never acted together before. Oh, we have lots of times. Well, not lots of times. We um, we tried about to half avoid a dozen it, times. <laughs> yeah. We actually met in something um, years and years and years and years and years ago, uh, a television play which never got recorded because there was an electrician strike. And uh, so um, there we were, left um, uh, on our own in the evening with nothing to do, and I turned to Prue, who was the nearest person, and said, let's go to the pictures. And that's how we started. <laughs> started at the pictures, not mm. actually at the theatre. The play was called She Died Young, subtitled mm. by the cast None Too Soon. <laughs> it was very, very bad. <laughs> well, you're now in a play with another title, which, which is in, in itself, you know, might give you similar thoughts, A Long Day's Journey Into Night, mm. Eugene O'Neill. Bristol Old Vic, which actually for you, Tim, it's, it's a place with, with great associations, Bristol Old Vic. Yes, yes. Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a sort of half Bristolian because I, I was uh, brought up there uh, as a kid and um, have worked there a lot and, and I'm actually on the board of the theatre. So I'm, this is a, a co-production between the National Theatre and the Bristol Old Vic and um, Prue's been working at the National quite a lot and, and I'm involved with the Bristol Old Vic, so I'm the sort of Bristol input and proves the national input. So it's really a coincidence that we're working together at all. We, we aren't sort of engaged as a as a married couple for slightly less money and <laughs> stand, you know. so the two of them it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah. It's known as a bit of a gruel a long day's journey tonight, simply in terms of doing it. I mean, how, how are you, as I say, bearing up? Uh, all right, I think. I mean, it, I mean, it's a very strong, very powerful play. Um, I mean, mother's a junkie, father's uh, an alcoholic, uh, one of the sons is dying of consumption, it's a good laugh. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, actually, it, it, it is extremely funny in, in places, and the, uh, I think what, what draws audiences to it, and, and the audiences have been very enthusiastic so far, is, is that it is a play about a family, and although they're a rather extreme family, in some ways they're, they're a very typical family and people find echoes of their own family life, I think, in it all the time. You're also playing real people. Now, this is something that, that, that you two, I don't know whether, you know, you like to be thought of in that way, but I do think of you very much as playing a lot of people who have and do exist. I mean, you, Prue, with, with the current Queen, mm. Elizabeth II, mm. you've played Queen Victoria mm. as well. Mm. Tim, you, Edward, Edward VII, Winston Churchill. Is that, you, know, you see a non-actor asking actors, and the actors go, and say, oh, God, you know. It's, it's, no, but it's, no. Do you, it's very does it affect question. the way you approach a yes. role when it's somebody yes. real? Mm. It helps it, it, um, if, if the person is well documented, and of course you go straight to the books and look at the pictures and. and so try you to find out the off stage yes. life. My problem is that this, this woman was very tall and extremely beautiful, you see. <laughs> I, had to, I started at a slight disadvantage. Ah. Oh, <laughs> no, but you see, you're um, one but, of these but, people who can change their body to suit the role. Cause well, I hope so, but, but it's. Um, uh, well, yes, Coral Brown is a bit of a problem. I'm actually seven and a half inches too short for Coral Brown, but I have all these lifts and that was all that. But uh, th this, this part, um, we are playing Eugene O'Neill's actual parents. Mm. And um, that, that is, um, it, it's, it's both a help and a hindrance. In, in one sense, you've got something to go on, you've got something to aim for, and the other sense, uh, and the other... Um, Against sense. that, you've got a responsibility to live up to. Yes. You, but you have, at least in this case, they're not people who are generally well known. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the Queen. No, that's Lots right. of people mm -hmm. knew, knew mm -hmm. Churchill. Mm -hmm. At which point do you say, I must now cast aside impersonation mm -hmm. and, and put in me? Quite soon, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I think you... <laughs> You know, Getting a bit kaleidoscope in this conversation. <laughs> Mike Yarwood would, would, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't do uh, three hours of, uh, of an impersonation. He's got more sense. <laughs> um, you know, I think the thing to do is to, is to give, uh, give a, a general impression to show, that, show the audience that at least you're, you're switched on to what you ought to be. After that, uh, I mean, you've only got one instrument to play the tune on, which is your own personality, your own voice and so on. And, and if you constantly hide that behind a mask, then nothing comes over at all. Mm. That's true. So you just give them a clue to say, well, you know, I know what I'm doing and I've read the books and seen a few pictures. Are you critical of one another? Can you be critical of one another? <laughs> <I'll ask. Yeah. laughs> yes. yes. In what yeah. way? Come on, let's be honest. Let's, let, let's have a... Well, when it's not going well, we pick at each other all the time. And if it's going mm. well, then we leave each other alone. It's, uh, but I think that's like life, you know, really. Yes. In any job you're doing. It's a funny experience both be, uh, being in the same thing because, you know, if, if, if one of you is, is, is in a show and, and the other's doing something else, and the one, um, somebody's having a, one of us is having a bad time, then the other one cheers you up. But if you're both experiencing something which is going badly, at any time, then, you, you know, it sort of doubles the misery, really. Because and I thought it trebles it if one is, is, is doing badly and the other's doing well, because the one who's doing well must feel awful about That'll be the day. That'll be the day, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see what you mean. It's just beginning to go... The, last night was a goodie, wasn't it?
And we're in a very oh, good yes, mood we'll, this we'll morning. Oh, right yes, it'll be all right by the time you see it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yes we'll, be, we'll be ready to open in Sheffield. <laughs> People are mixed on this, of course. I mean, some say there are no things, such things as good and bad audiences. The audiences are what you make them. Um, others are quite decided, and certainly in my limited experience, the audiences are very, very different. Do you think that? I think they are. I think you're right. Audiences are, are, are very different, and, and, they, and they teach you a lot. Um, I mean, the noises that they make and the silences that they make teach you a tremendous amount. And they are different. I mean, this is why I, I personally love touring, because you meet a different audience each week. Um, usually a very sophisticated audience, because touring audiences have seen a lot, lot more variety of theatre on, on, on the whole than the London audiences have. And, uh, and you do learn an awful lot from them. You, you, you find out when they're bored, when they don't understand something, when they don't believe something. When, when their expectation has been let down. Well, somehow. now, this is interesting because, I mean, talking of expectation, particularly with you, Prue, they, they must be coming expecting someone else to see Sybil Fawlty. Well, I hope not. I don't think. I think they're more, I think they're more intelligent than that. I mean, I, I, I've, I've never played anything like Sybil Fawlty on television since, before or since. Mm. I, 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 what, we, what you hope for is that they, they liked what you did on television and they trust you as an actor or actress and they'll come and see what you're in because they think it may be interesting and that you might do it well. You know, I think audiences are far more intelligent than a lot of critics well, can I be think, credit I for. I think they are actually. But yes. you've got a rather an unusual lifestyle at the moment while you're in Bristol. <laughs> you're not staying in the Grand Dame type not hotel. At all, no, no. A houseboat. Is this, well, is this it, your no, own? no, narrow boat. No, it's a canal sorry. boat. Yes, mm. no, it's it, it, well, it is. It's a, a house on the water. It's a it's a canal boat, and uh, we've had it for some years now, and um, it's moored in Bath, and uh, we live on it. Is it going to take you from Bath, where you're appearing in Bristol, to your other venues? Do you Not suspect? really, because it goes at about four and a half miles an hour. It could and, walk uh, quicker, Sheffield's actually. The next day. <laughs> <laughs> So you are touring then, you've got, you've got mm, yes. it, it, quite a long tour together. Yes, Sheffield, Glasgow, Manchester, Nottingham, Bradford, Newcastle, Cardiff. So right to all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> and when that's over, do you know? Then we go to the National Theatre uh, until August or so, uh, and uh, then we go and do something else. Mm. So although Eugene O'Neill sometimes sound heavy, Fair amount of laughs and, and a good amount of deeper enjoyment. It's Fascinating, a, it's, I think. It's, well, a, it's a big. Very touching. The Bristol couple leaving it the other the other evening, and our um, assistant producer heard them saying, "The man said it was good, wasn't it?" And the woman said, "Yes, I could have done with another act." How very oh, nice. Was, wasn't that lovely? <laughs> <laughs> Bless her up. May you Bless have many more yes. of them. <laughs> nice to talk to you, Timothy West, Fernando yeah. Scales. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, more from the singer who's beating the glamorous youngsters at their own game, the lady who's becoming a big hit in more ways than one on three continents. With the title track of her latest album, just issued as a single, here's Rita McNeil and Flying On Your Own. <laughs> 